Hello, my name is Noel Kingsbury, and with my colleague Annie Gelfoyle, I run Garden Masterclass. Now, Annie and I started Garden Masterclass uh, six years ago to put on live educational events uh, in the British Isles. Uh, but with um, COVID, uh, the lockdown in April 2020, uh, we started doing a public service broadcast. Uh, and then we've settled down to running both live events, uh, but also with a big online content. So we do this Thursday Garden Chat once a week on a Thursday evening, six o'clock um, Western European time. And those recordings then go up on to uh, YouTube. Now, we also do webinars. We have a webinar season that runs through from September to May. We get leading experts globally uh, from the garden and landscape world to talk about their specialism. And of course, that's an opportunity uh, to ask them questions. Most of those webinars are recorded and are then available uh, through Vimeo from our website. Uh, we also put on courses. Uh, there's a course on naturalistic planting design, for example, which I do with uh, Professor Nigel Dunnett of the University of Sheffield in, in Northern England. Uh, and uh, we sometimes get involved in organizing conferences. Uh, we do all sorts of things that are aimed at encouraging quality planting, quality gardening, uh, knowledge about plants and botany, and plant science, and uh, we hope you'll you'll join us. Uh, we have a membership scheme which gives you discounts on our webinars and live events and various other goodies. Uh, and but also you can just sign up for our monthly email newsletter uh, to keep in touch with what we're doing. We believe and we've been told by many people that what we do is unique. It's unique in the range and quality of people we talk to and our global reach and our diversity. Uh, so I uh, hope you enjoy this particular episode and uh, do come back for more. Uh, we are going once again, we've had, we've been there before, to Lithuania. Um, <laughs> so Annie, I will leave you to introduce our guest. I will indeed. And just on the on the on the facade greening uh, subject, if, if anyone's thinking of, of, of planting an Akebia crinata, they need to go to Sissinghurst and look at the one that's absolutely up to the top of Vita's Tower, literally all the way up to the top. And um, I think I think uh, Troy is just the, the axe is swinging, I think. I think he's going to take it down. But, you know, I, I, every time I think, shall I put one of those in? I just think of Vita's Tower. I think, mm, not, 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 not here, not in this space. So, yeah. And it's quite unusual that we are both in our home territories this week, Mel. So for the last few weeks, we've been flying solo off our Thursday Garden Chat. So I, yes, yes, I yes. was in the lakes last last week and you were, where were you? You were somewhere else. And we were, you were in I Spain. In Sp I was in Spain yeah, last yeah. week. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, this yeah. is the first time for a few months where I'm in Sussex and you're in Portugal. Anyway, yes. um, our our wonderful guest tonight, um, Lina Libertate, and I think am I saying that right, Lina? I hope so. I hope so. My <laughs> Lithuanian, I didn't quite That's perfect, okay. I didn't quite perfect my Lithuanian when I was there. <laughs> um, so Lena is, I just describe her as a force to be reckoned with. I spent um, a wonderful few days, well, more than a few days, because I got stranded in, in Vilnius, which is not a hardship. If anybody wants to get stranded anywhere, I would suggest doing it in, in Vilnius um, back in August. Um, and Lena, I think Lena, first time I met you may well have been actually in Bergamo, I think, uh, when we person to person, probably. Yeah, um, I think so. And, yeah, I think so. A, a good few years ago. And then, of course, you in Bergamo this year but um and I and you know I was it was just such an amazing trip to to come to Lithuania and to see you in your home uh country and and you organized the most incredible conference a sellout conference with 700 people which is no mean feat I mean that's extraordinary um and I, I wonder how you actually describe yourself, because I would say that you're a facilitator and a producer and a TV presenter and an author and all round uh, incredible person. But if you had to describe yourself with a couple of words, what do you how do you, you say I'm Lena? I am what? <laughs> oh, well, oh, and thanks for having me and for this uh, lovely words about my about what I do. And actually, this is a really um, 
difficult question for me. I usually don't know how to say what I do, who I am. Mm. And the, it depends on the situation. Sometimes I'm the author. Sometimes I'm the organizer or businesswoman, I would say. Yeah. And sometimes I'm just content creator. Yeah. I'm not a landscape architect. Uh, some may think of me like that. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, and what I do, I will tell a few stories today. Yeah. And I think the surprising thing is that your background isn't horticulture. You're you're quite new, well, relatively new to the to the, to this world. But my goodness me, have you made a mark on on uh, on on horticulture in Lithuania and beyond? So um, now you've got a presentation to show us. So sure, and I think that tells the story probably uh, better than we we would say backwards and forwards. So do you want to go into screen share and we can start? Uh, yeah, sure. If you're ready, if this, if you want to start, uh, yes, yes, yes. Let's <laughs> go. Do you see it? Absolutely brilliant. All yeah. right, yeah. all yeah. right. Yeah. So uh, I think the first question that I usually get is not what I do, but it's what's the yellow wheelbarrow? <laughs> because this is the uh, the name, the title that I work with. Uh, I've called my um, my business, my content, Yellow Wheelbarrow, and uh, usually people are, are asking, like, oh, what's the name about? Why? Why? And uh, it, it's not, uh, there is no any specific uh, story or reason behind that. I just named it uh, Yellow Wheelbarrow because I wanted to, to uh, this brand to be... Um, uh, to be visible, to be understandable, and so that if you uh, would say once, you remember that for like always, because you just vis visualize how to say this word. You just <laughs> visualize, yeah, yeah, visualize, yeah. And yes, I do have a real uh, yellow wheelbarrows, actually two of them, uh, that I can use them for the photo shoots, uh, but. Um, this is the name that I work in, uh, in Lithuania, and in the Lithuanian language, it's called Geltonas Karutis. Uh, so I've started uh, uh, my story uh, here in uh, like 10 years ago. Uh, I'm not uh, in the horticulture before that. I'm not a landscape architect. Uh, my bachelor degree is Lithuanian language, and my master degree is uh, marketing. Uh, and actually work uh, according to my mm, profession, but in this field. So wh why why I came here? I came here, uh, I would say, in uh, uh, like more than 10 years ago uh, when uh, we uh, we got a new house and we wanted to, uh, to be uh, the surrounding, to be beautiful, to be nice, but we didn't know how to make that happen. And so this was the question that I faced at uh, that time. And uh, to have a bit more context, what was going on around that time in Lithuania? So let's see where the, that Lithuania is on the map. So uh, we are near the Baltic Sea. Uh, we have uh, neighbors like Latvia, Belarus, and uh, Poland as our major uh, neighbor countries. Uh, so we are not a warm climate country uh this is official um this are official um, uh, map uh, but actually when we grow plants we say that we are like on the zone four and five so that means that we don't have so hot uh, uh, summers but at the same time we have snow in the winter and we have beautiful autumns for example, right now we have colorful leaves and it's really beautiful outside. So this is uh, 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 what we are. And uh, looking to the history, uh, we had uh, a really huge this Lithuania territory uh, several centuries ago. And we also were for several uh, centuries even under the Russian and Soviet Union uh, depressions, I would say. But finally, the sculpture of this Lenin is now crushed. And uh, now, uh, in uh, like 20 years ago, we have the situation we have to deal with. So 
And so this is our, what our culture had to go through. And uh, after the Soviet Union, many people don't know simply what's going on in our countries, not even not only the Lithuania, but also in Latvia, Estonia, etc. So what we had at that time, uh, after this uh, horrible period, uh, we loved everything that glitters and what is bright. We wanted to have everything. And of course, we were influenced by all those uh, fashionable, bright and beautiful and bold uh, things that came to Lithuania. Annuals, of course, uh, those uh, bright colors, uh, the topiary. And I think many things we can notice now in uh, other countries as well at like that 20 years ago. But in Lithuania, it was very strong uh, influence. Uh, so let's uh, come back to my situation. So at that time, I was uh, in this surrounding, but in uh, 2011 and 2013, when I came to that situation that I need to do something uh, with my backyard, I, I wanted to do something beautiful, something that would be aesthetic and uh, I didn't want to be that uh, uh, those uh, under those influences with those annuals, etc. But I didn't know how to. Uh, what do I want? And I understood that I'm the not the only one person that uh, I need uh, some kind of knowledge on that. And of course, Pete Adolf already was uh, mainstreaming uh, in the Europe as well as in Lithuania. So I thought. Maybe it's a bit similar, you know, to the culinary books that we had those uh, like yellow leaves uh, with the, lots of text. But later on, we had like a beautiful pictures, uh, uh, which are like amazing. So I thought that uh, actually the same will come to the horticulture, to the landscaping. So uh, we had those uh, boring books and I understood that we will have something like that and I thought well if I'm that person that uh, I don't know what to look for I don't know uh, where to look for this inspiration so there are many people who don't know as well so may maybe I can help uh, maybe I can serve th those people and uh, maybe this is something that I can do so then it started uh, in uh, 2013, uh, I have started uh, this uh, Geltonus Karutis, Yellow Wheelbarrow, uh, with the courses. Courses were for hobbyists who are at the same stage uh, as I was, like, I don't know what to do with my backyard. So uh, during those years, we had uh, many courses held. It was now we teach. Uh, about up to 3,000 people per year. Uh, there are courses for hobbyists. There are courses for, for professionals. Uh, there are uh, courses that we're uh, making uh, for uh, consultants for the uh, um, uh, garden centers. Uh, there are courses that we're organizing for municipalities so that uh, people who work there uh, could get the newest, the most uh, uh, inspirational uh, content. Uh, also, uh, of course, during the pandemic, so we went online. So we have started courses online. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, so now uh, we have uh, maybe there is a question: What we are teaching there? So yes, uh, we have a lot of courses about uh, uh, planting design also how to make sketches, uh, what to do in, in your uh, backyard if it's small, what to do in your um, bigger territories, uh, what to do in the cemetery, because it's also a thing in Lithuania. So we prune, we uh, make uh, plant combinations and etc. So many different uh, things we teach. Uh, and there are also online and uh, live. At the same time, I thought that uh, when uh, when a person goes to them to the courses, 
uh, after the completion, he doesn't know what to do next. And uh, people wanted to do something more. So I've decided that I should do maybe some kind of a conference so that people from Lithuania could gather to one place uh, at one date, just simply all of them once per year. And then I could uh, give some of the... Uh, the most um, interesting and trends, uh, etc. So something uh, that would be more uh, at that time. So then I've decided to make a conference. So the first conference, Garden Style, was in 2015. I was wondering if I will succeed with that or not. I thought maybe if there will come like 100 people, I will be okay. If there will be 300 people, so I will be like, oh, amazing. So I thought maybe 200 people would be like, a, it would, it would be our result. But in the end, to the first conference, there were uh, like a 330 attendees. So I was like, yay, I did that. Okay, so that means I, I, I got to the point where I understood what the audience needs. So that was the start. And uh, during those years, now I organize those conferences uh, annually. Uh, we had uh, uh, Cassian Schmidt, uh, uh, we had uh, James Hitchmall uh, online, but still uh, because it was during the pandemic. Uh, or we had uh, you, Annie. This is the picture of you in this year. And uh, of course, uh, I'm very happy that uh, the, that those conferences at, um, attract so many people because, uh, yes, there were 700 people. And I do understand that uh, people from different uh, countries, from um, from different backgrounds, from with different experiences in other countries, they don't understand how that happened. But uh, I would say... Uh, um, uh, when you're listening, it looks like maybe it's it's very it was very easy to make this happen in those ten years, and maybe it looks like I was just sitting there and waiting for the success to come, but it was not the true, and it, it, and um, there were many things that I have been done before that. And it was not only courses and it was not only the conference. I think courses and conference, this has, th those are the uh, iceberg, you know, the tip of the iceberg. And there are so many work done uh, there before that. So what I do, uh, from the very beginning, uh, I made uh, uh, a very big, uh, strong focus on the content that I gave it pro bono. So that means I wrote uh, articles, lots of articles, social media as well. Uh, I gave interviews to the news portals and garden magazines. Uh, and I still do that uh, like several times per month uh, and up to now. Uh, what I did else, uh, I, um, I was running uh, discussions. Uh, this is a modern garden museum or museum that uh, we were talking before that uh, um, before this presentation. Uh, it was it's in Vilnius, so there were several years of uh, summer discussions about garden in their sculpture garden. So I was moderating it. I also have started a YouTube channel uh, in twenty fifteen, uh, and. Uh, it's interesting that uh, the most uh, watch uh, uh, the video who was uh, watched the most uh, actually was about uh, um, tomatoes. It got uh, more than uh, three thousand, uh, three hundred thousand views. So it's amazing because I even uh, didn't put any uh, euro per promotion of that. So it's only organic reach. So. It's also not not done by one night. Uh, and of course, during those uh, filmings, there, there were many things that you cannot see online. It just uh, uh, there were uh, situations that just didn't go well. Uh, even when I was filming myself by me, so I was uh, putting this uh, 
photo camera in front of me and uh, there was there were no autofocus so I had to do so many things and there were so many failures that just I cannot count them uh, even um or what else I did I had a radio show it was for like two years or so this is a picture from the pandemic time uh, and later all those things went uh, um, I went to the um, TV show. So now I'm hosting uh, uh, the third season of uh, uh, of a garden show in Lithuania on the national television. And uh, I think for me, it's like a rewarding time because here I can see uh, those influences that maybe I have done by myself during all those 10 years. And uh, here I can see what people have created in Lithuania and what potential we do have here. So let's see. For example, here is the uh, garden, uh, which is a very small one. It was not nothing like that before this project ever uh, happened. Uh, the author of this garden is uh, Vaiva Morozienia. So, for example, what she did, uh, she uh, worked with this old, old apple tree. And uh, I think anybody would just simply cut it down because it, it looks ugly. It's, it's not worth to, 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 to maintain it at all. But she cured it and she, fo she found a place uh, for it to thrive in this uh, beautiful new garden full of uh, blooms and uh, of, full of perennials. Uh, and in the same garden, there is a place where, uh, well, this, um, uh, <laughs> I, I could not call it flower bed because there are not too much flowers, but it's a beautiful place in the shade, uh, which is uh, really amazing, I think. And uh, this is what uh, we do now. This is what I want to show you as uh, where we came from, uh, where we went from that, um, I don't know, like 20 years ago. And this is why I'm so happy to, to see this um, change. Uh, there is some, uh, th there is uh, the view from the um, uh, Viva's uh, personal garden in the autumn with those uh, beautiful colors. Uh, another one project that I'd like to show is uh, near the sea. Uh, we are also con constantly looking for this identity of Lithuania so that we could uh, not be the same as uh, everywhere in Europe. You know, to grow Kalamagrostis, everybody can do that, but we have to be somehow different. And we're looking for the uh, those sparks, uh, sparkling the things that we can uh, show. And here's one of uh, the examples. I think this is very beautiful to uh, and very unique uh, because this um, place is uh, near the sea. And uh, those uh, blue uh, windowsills are uh, very unique to that particular place. And when you see those blue doors, I think that's amazing. And the host of this um, uh, of this place, uh, she has uh, also looking. Uh, she's also looking for some uh, things that she could add to that. Uh, unique place so this obelisk is also uh, blue because uh, she just uh, she already looks for something uh, new to add there um, another interesting project is uh, done by uh, Ula Maria Bujovskaita she's a landscape architect uh, uh, born in Lithuania but she's working uh, in uh, uh, United Kingdom and uh, this was the uh, old uh, shi ship, I would say, uh, in the river, but uh, it was not destroyed after it, it, it's it's that doesn't work anymore. But it was um, uh, fulfilled with the pioneer plans, and this was the idea that she followed. So uh, this uh, ship also now serves as an uh, art gallery. You can go inside and see what's going on there. 
and it's full of pioneer plants. And every winter it goes somewhere to stay calm near the during the winter time. And then it uh, the ship comes back, and then again you can see how the plants are emerging, and uh, you can go to the gallery, which which is there inside. It's a really beautiful uh, project. Uh, one more project uh, that I would like to show is uh, which also combines old with the new is the box to squares uh, done by. Uh, uh, created by Linus Usas, landscape architect. And it's really incredible project uh, where uh, you can see not only perennials, but also a beautiful big 200 old uh, tree, uh, which uh, was uh, saved. Uh, and uh, people say that it was, uh, uh, there was some kind of insurance for 2 million euros so that uh, the ones who were uh, in charge of this project so that they could uh, they would save this tree and i think this is very important as well um and also there are some hidden nice places over there from that project uh well when talking about to or how Lithuanians are unique and what is uh, what, what's important to uh, know about our country, how we are uh, working with the plants, with the design. So we have a lot of uh, experience with the growing itself. So uh, we love growing uh, uh, vegetables, vegetables and fruits and berries, and we know how to grow them. So it's not an issue for us, but of course, people love to do that. So when you go during the September, for example, just in Lithuania, you can see just going by the car that there are many different kinds of apple trees that people are growing in their uh, backyards and those species and people know how to care after them. And I think this is one of the most uh, uh, important uh, things that we still know how to grow potatoes and uh, tomatoes and apples, etc. And I think uh, this is important for us uh, not to forget that and to show to our children how to how those um, vegetables and fruits how they are coming to our table. So those topics are definitely included in our tv show for example and also there are some crazy people there uh, for example that guy uh, he lives lives uh, in a, a little town uh, somewhere in the middle of uh, lithuania and he has uh, uh, dig out his pond and he grows lots of water lilies there and he sent uh, them uh, sends um, receives them from different countries and uh, I think that's amazing that there are uh, uh, sometimes uh, young people who are going into this field and they're so passionate about that um, yeah so I, I'm happy to see that uh, what I did during those uh, 10 years, it somehow in evolves and I can see that uh, it makes some kind of impact. At the same time, I'm, I have to think constantly what I'm going to do next. So, um, so first of all, of course, I'm going to proceed with my TV shows as far as I can, because uh, this is where I meet people and this is where I can see what's interesting there going on. And at the same time, I can spread the message because this, this is the audience that I can reach during the TV and uh, spread the message about uh, ecology, about sustainability, about uh, what's uh, good in design and about something that uh, maybe we should follow. Uh, at the same time, I'm going uh, to move forward with the community. Uh, I've started this community as a Geltonas Karutis Club and uh, we meet uh, 
uh, from time to time and we are going to uh to the people's um uh plots uh, we're going to visit uh, uh, art galleries together we are meeting for discussions about some specific uh, issues that we have and i'm happy that uh, i've started this uh, community as a club uh, a year ago and we have already more than 300 members so i think uh, this is a very good start to to build a strong community here and when you have community you you can do some something more because you are together you are not alone uh what else uh for for my uh, what i'm going to do next so i've written a book for children about uh, uh gardening it's called uh, garden detective uh so it's uh, now translated to latvian language as well so i'm happy to do some kind of a education to the young generation as well uh, and uh, I have started a project with, which is uh, the marketplace of plants, uh, which is now in Lithuania as a first step. Uh, so this is, those are Margarita and Ugne, my colleagues who are working in that project. And uh, this marketplace um, it combines like uh, 30 or 40 already nurseries from Lithuania uh, who sell plants and uh, garden, anything, equipment, seeds, uh, greenhouses, anything that you would need there. And I think this is very important to uh, bring everybody to one place, especially when we are a uh, very little, a very small country so that they could be all together and uh, we could grow this uh, um, gardening level, I would say, in Lithuania further. Uh, of course, uh, I would be nobody without my colleagues and lecturers uh, and my team, and uh, I'm going also to expand them including some people from abroad, like uh, international um, uh, there as well. Now we are thinking to make the first uh, uh, cert uh, certificated uh, course uh, on the design topic. We are going to start that uh, in Lithuania first, but if we succeed, who knows, maybe we'll go uh, internationally and that would be very interesting for me. So these are the plans for uh, for the courses. Uh, but for the country, uh, now as uh, Vilnius uh, has been named uh, green capital in two, uh, uh, 2025, so I think this is a very nice opportunity for us to make this, uh, you know, shout out louder about Vilnius, about how green it is, uh, so we could invite more people to come. And I invite you to come as well to Lithuania. Maybe you don't have to wait for that year. Uh, you can come here and uh, next year, for example, because we do organize garden style conference uh, each year in the end of August. Uh, but uh, in that uh, 2025, I, I think in that year, we'll have a really uh, big event or maybe many big events. So I will be happy to invite all of you. Yeah, so the, that would be it for me. And I think you can, you may have questions because I don't know even what's the most important for you to know. There are some questions, Lena, yes. but um, oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think I think what the, what I want to say <laughs> is, and what I found so extraordinary when when I visited back in August is, Lithuania is a big country. It's a really big country, and it's not very densely populated compared with other countries. Okay. And yet, you you know, you fill seven hundred seater auditorium. You've got three hundred people in your club. You know, I mean. It's an, it shows extraordinary commitment from everybody, um, you know, following what you do and enthusiasm, because obviously people have got to travel to do that. I know people were coming from Estonia and Latvia and Poland, but, you know, um, 
it, it is. I, I just found it so inspiring, the energy that and the positive energy. I was absolutely bowled over by it. Um, and I just want to share something before we go over to the questions. Well, in the workshop that I was giving, um, you know, one of the students said, oh, my my concept for this workshop is, is a Lithuanian folk song. I said, oh, and I jokingly said, so you're going to sing it, aren't you? Uh, you know, thinking she go, no, no, no. And she said, yeah, OK. So she stood up and she started singing this Lithuanian folk song. And everyone in the room joined in and it was so emotional. It was really, really emotional. Never, ever had I had a workshop where people <laughs> were singing. It was beautiful. And it just for me summed up that amazing coming together and positive energy it was just it was really really affecting it was wonderful and um and what you've done in 10 years is what most people do in a lifetime <laughs> extraordinary. Yeah, i think it's just one of those kind of rebirth of a country thing yeah were countries that for you know half a century were just under you know, the, the soviet boot and yeah. remember that uh webinar we had the the thursday garden chat with uh, yanis um 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 yanis from um uh, uh, Sands, that's it. Yanis Rooksands yeah. from, from Latvia yeah. um, talking. Um, but the choirs, of course, choirs were part of the whole political movement. And uh, there are choirs thousands strong, aren't there? And it's such a really, yeah, and that's a yeah. way to bring people together. It's wonderful. So we've got lots of questions. And, and I want yeah. to say we've got a tremendous North American turnout this evening. So thank yeah, you, North yes. America. You are amazing. And we love you all. Um, so let's just have a look here. Um, so Jenny Nelson saying, um, are there native plants that we should be using in our gardens? And I'm not sure, Jenny, whether you mean um, are you do you want to do you want to ask that question? Are, are you saying from your garden or are you saying Lithuanian gardens? Lithuanian or? plants that the rest of the world should be using that we aren't. Ah, brilliant. Right. So there we are. Are there? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Actually, uh, I think th th there is always, always a discussion. What is native and mm -hmm. what is not native? So um, we treat as traditional plants peonies so mm -hmm. or for example uh roots, roots? but it's yeah, yeah. yeah. but mm -hmm. but it's uh, it's not native actually it came yeah. to Lithuania like some i don't know centuries ago yeah, and, yeah. Uh, for example um, in our traditional patterns you can see uh, lilies a lot mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. should i say it's native mm. yeah with, yeah, with, so I think so. Mm -hmm. With your water lily man, is he growing water lilies as cut flowers? Because there, are, you you know, people are selling them as cut flowers too. Was is he selling them as cut flowers, or is he just growing them for the love of water lilies, just for the yeah, love? Of it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like uh, his collection, and oh. he grows and maybe some uh, sells yeah. for for other people, but not like a cut flowers. No, okay. just just like that. Just for the love of it. Jenny also yeah. asks a very good question is um with the short growing season, do um do growers have extra challenges in Lithuania? So yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it's really interesting for me when I go to international conferences that usually people are dealing with heat, mm -hmm. but we usually deal are dealing with the cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the problem is. I think that the uh, the cold period is not very stable. Mm -hmm. So if we would have like uh, the cold comes in December and ends up ends up in the March, so that would be nice. But now as the climate is changing, so we have like uh, from time to time the temperatures go go a bit up and down, up and down, and uh, this change I think harms plants even more than the really <laughs> strong you know and cold weather mm, so mm. this is the situation that we have usually people who are not uh, professional they look to those beautiful pictures in the british magazines and they say that oh it's not possible for us to make that nice garden mm. because we cannot grow plants that they do Mm. But uh, I think uh, we uh, cannot grow like, a, I would say, 10 or 15% of uh, this usual 
um, list assortment that down. says so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, and and there's, there's a message or a question from Lois, and I I know there's an ulterior motive here, Lois, because Lois is on the um, west coast of the states, and she organises garden tours. But her question is, how do you handle language differences at your conference? Now I know what you're going to say, so well you, you can obviously answer the question, but <laughs> I'm wondering whether Lois is putting together a Lithuanian gardening tour. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> to take in your conference yeah actually in the Lithuania people talk in English mm -hmm. a lot so it's not a problem to speak uh, <clears throat> anywhere outside in English so people know that language uh, very well I would say in the conference uh, we organize translation because uh, otherwise I've noticed that even uh, during the workshops for example uh, there were situations that I had two workshops so one with translation and another without. And I uh, saw that people would pay extra, but they would go with, with the translation because mm -hmm. otherwise they are not sure if they would understand everything because, you know, it's like a niche. There are some maybe specific terms. Mm -hmm. So that's why just in case they better go with translation so that they would not miss a word. Yeah. And a couple of comments from Wendy, who's also over in the States, saying that was a wonderful presentation. And I wonder how you find time to do it all so well. And I do, too. And I have to say, I'm going to be applying for a job in your club, by the way. Um, thank you so much for your creativity and passion. And from the photographs, you can see the vitality and happiness on everyone's faces. And that's absolutely true. It's, you know, that it really does sort of really show in everyone's faces. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Um... I do understand, Annie, what you are saying, that in the conference, you can feel the oh, energy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That's amazing. That inspires me so much. Mm -hmm. And I saw that I've invited my friends from the business industry to help me in the registration desks at mm -hmm. one of the conferences. Mm -hmm. And after that, they were approaching me and saying, you know what have you done here because people are leaving and they are coming to us at just simply re re registration desk yeah. and they're saying thank you so much it was so good <laughs> <laughs> and she was like they're coming and thanking us yeah and I, was like, uh, I don't know i i think just yeah it's hard work yeah and i think all of us we are people so i think we uh, it, it's there cannot be any barriers because mm. plans and design this is so uh, this is something that can join join all of us mm. it, it's not mm. a barrier it, it should join so Absolutely. that's we yeah. Um, yeah no lena can, can i can i ask um having taught workshops and i think about half a dozen east european countries including lithuania one of the things i notice is that it's overwhelmingly women who come to the events uh say <laughs> with webinars we have um we've been, i've been having some colleagues set up garden masterclass polska over the past year and again it's and we had a conference last our first conference in march in no june so june yeah in june and you know very good turnout but i would say almost 90 percent female um i refuse to believe that uh east european men don't garden um but how, how do you do try to do anything to sort of engage more men get a get a better gender balance um i don't know maybe they go rather hunting or fishing <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know. I, I have no answer for this. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow, I think uh, people treat this um, uh, as a creative, uh, like a hobby. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is where it all starts. Mm -hmm. uh, later, some of those go so deeply into that, that they change their profession. They just uh, go to study and then they work in the field because they feel that this is something that they can be creative mm. there. So I don't know, maybe um, that's why, or maybe this is because uh, this uh, perennial movement so um, uh, in involved all those uh, blooms and flowers and maybe that's why. It's more like um, aesthetic and, uh, I don't know, 
Yeah, yeah. Um, Lois has put another comment on the chat box saying there's a cultural garden in Cleveland, Ohio, in the US, uh, that includes Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia and Ukraine. Um, they were built in the 1930s um, and a volunteer at these gardens says that the, says that these gardens have outlasted the USSR. So, so, so it's quite good. And then and and it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. And Jenny's asking, are you partnering with any universities? Uh, no, we are completely independent uh, from any anyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think this is very good because mm -hmm. then we don't have too much bureaucracy or so. We can mm -hmm. do whatever we want. And this is what I love. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I can choose people to work with. I can choose if to make this uh, TV show or conference mm -hmm. or should they go to nationally or should mm -hmm. they do something here? And this is what I love. Yeah. Of course, I'd like to uh, have partners as universities or so, especially now where we are going to go on this uh, certificated course. And uh, we need some kind of certification and we need some guidelines to follow. Mm -hmm. And now we're, we are in the process how to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And um, I would gladly work with this, some kind of a partnership. So why not? I mm -hmm. think this, mm -hmm. this can make uh, us move uh, forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a, that's a good idea. Um, well, it has been amazing um, having you on and, and sort of sharing your story because I think it's so inspiring. Um, and, it, you know, it's just wonderful to see what you've done in relatively short space of time and how you've gathered this momentum and then where you're going with that in the future. It's quite incredible. And um, gosh, we're going to be really looking forward to seeing what's next on your agenda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably, I, 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 you know, Thank I you so much. I wouldn't be surprised what you came up with because you just seem to be, you know, it's boundless, limitless what you what you do, um, and also to show the work of Viva, who who is another is one of your colleagues, who who is an incredible. Um, designer and just to show you you know I sat with Viva and we were having lunch and she said yeah yeah you know I'm an ecologist and a garden designer and then I thought I'd just study architecture what you like an evenings no 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 I thought I'd do an architecture degree what you mean you no no I did it while I was working what yeah I just think I just couldn't believe you know that this energy and 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 sort of commitment to it's fantastic yeah. absolutely fantastic yeah yeah we need some of that over here please please pass it oh, up dear. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah i think uh maybe it's uh, part of the game is that i'm not uh, a horticulture person mm -hmm. because i cannot imagine that somebody would do what i do and uh, uh creating gardens at the same time mm -hmm. because when the spring comes Everybody who are in the field, they're going to great to the clients, etc. But yeah. what I'm doing, I'm just going to this content and uh, just sitting in the computer. You're not the deep, deep, in, in the not oh, outside, you know. Like so that. maybe do you this not is... garden yourself? Yeah, I do have my own garden. I think you probably do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps yeah. not. A, perhaps not a terribly demanding one. Right. Um, well, I think some some more some more comments that we want to share with you so um jenny's also saying you might want to contact the master gardeners association in the states um Hello. yeah and then jenny harris is saying thank you for such a nice presentation welcome back jenny we haven't seen you for a while um inspiring for me to for sure as i'm always contemplating how to increase the knowledge and connections in our small community well yeah i mean thank take you. it yeah, take a take a leaf out of Lena's book. Wendy's saying thank you so much. Bottle that energy and sell it to us. <laughs> I think you'd you'd be a millionaire if you did that. Um, and Jenny's saying lovely presentation. Keep sharing the horticultural content. So, well, now you know where to find Lena. Um, the only thing is, Lena, your your website is is in Lithuanian, and and uh, so and I'm assuming your YouTube as well is in Lithuanian. So, yes, we've all got to, we've all got to learn Lithuanian, haven't we now? <laughs> Well, the, 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 the language translation algorithms get better every year. Um, <laughs> and I had a, a good look at some last last winter um, and we decided they weren't quite up to it. But I'm going to have another look this this winter. Um, and uh, that that, I mean, that would really revolutionize things if we could just easily so you... and just transfer our, our, our material. Yeah. 
Do you yeah, mean think... on, on YouTube, you mean, Noel? Is uh, that YouTube, you Vimeo. I mean, you yeah. use this incredibly powerful, these algorithms for, for translation, which in many ways do a really good job. It's just yeah. that I say, yeah, that's technically correct. It's just that we wouldn't say it like that. I mean, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you do understand. Partners got to go in there somewhere because I know translation yeah. is so expensive otherwise. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually very happy with our TV show because our team yeah. makes an amazing job. Of course, it looks much yes, more yes. better than my YouTube's, uh, yeah. and uh, this is what I where I have to put more of my energy now. And mm. I am so happy with the result. You know, it's so satisfying when you work and you are happy with that. Yeah. yeah so, but of course, there are only uh, Lithuanian gardens yet. But mm -hmm. if you're interested, of course, it, it, it is possible to watch them. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah, yeah. And I would also um, echo what Lena said about going to Vilnius. If you want a break, if you want oh, to go somewhere, city, yes. it's mm. the most beautiful city. It has the oh, it has a lovely, lovely uh, feel about it. Very relaxed. Um, uh, it's really delightful and full of surprises. Actually, yeah, it, it's yes. a beautiful city. So, so Lena, thank you so much. It's been really nice having you on. Um, I know oh, you're. Thank you, thank you. You're off to a conference in Barcelona soon, so have fun there. Yeah, yeah enjoy. Yeah, thanks. Enjoy and um, keep us up to date with what you're what you're up to and what you're doing next. We we can't wait. Okay, thank, thank you for thank having you, me. Thank it was you. a pleasure. I was a bit nervous in in the beginning, but uh, no, with such a good fantastic. energy. They are fantastic. The yeah. yeah. Hope to hopefully see you again very soon, Lena. Take care. Yeah, sure. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody.